Oh, oh my gosh, this thing's so heavy. Oh. Well, let's start off with the navigation challenge right off the bat. Okay, so we got the brand new knee bot, which just came out like a couple months ago, versus the Roblox S6 Max V. Yes, you guys all know about the Roblox S6 Max V with its stereo camera system, so this guy can recognize objects in real time, so kind of knee bot. But one thing that the knee bot doesn't have is a camera system, it actually has an infrared sensor. But you could see that the knee bot clearly was able to recognize that it wasn't able to get through this area, so it's gonna take an alternate path. So when I set up this obstacle challenge, I thought the knee bot would be at a disadvantage because there's no front camera system, just an infrared sensor that's found on most well, vacuums. But due to its advanced LiDAR navigation, which is capable of picking up objects, did really well picking up objects and being able to navigate around them. Despite not having that front facing camera, the knee bot did really well holding up to the S6 Max V. I was quite impressed. I don't know exactly the processor on the knee bot, but it did a really good job. It was kind of mind blowing that this little robot vacuum was able to perform just as well as the Roblox. The Nipa had a successful Kickstarter. I believe it raised over $300,000 in funds and now it's starting to ship their products out. So the Nipa also has a self emptying bin which uses a bag system. Also, this guy has light on navigation, like I mentioned, with smart mapping, can do keep out zones, area select. Another thing I want to mention about the knee bot is it does have a dedicated wall sensor, kind of like the S6 Max V. So along the edges, the side brushes spin faster, and then in the open area, they spin slow so they don't kick up dirt and debris. Also on the knee bot, it's a dual side brush system. I'm a huge fan of dual side brushes. I think it does really well getting debris on both the left and right side of the robot, but I'll definitely showcase this later on in the video. Okay, so it looks like the S6 Max V caught up is now in the lead. So the last challenge is the wire chair leg challenge. Now on either side of the chair leg, there's only a couple millimeters. So the robot vacuum has to use its finesse to get through this chair leg challenge. Most robot vacuums do fail on this, even the M7 Pro failed. But we'll see how well the knee bot was able to get through it versus the Roblox S6 Max V. What? I can't believe my eyes. Is the knee bot going to actually win the challenge this time? Well, Roblox S6 Max V, you may not be the fastest uh, vacuum to navigate this challenge. Well, Roblox, it's a sad day. I guess you can't win them all. Well, in this video, we're going to check out the knee bot and see how well it does. We'll check out the self-emptying bin, the navigation, the pickup challenges, and we'll give it pros and cons and see if this well, back in right for you. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Nathan, this is Master. So thanks so much for dropping by. Uh, it's awesome to see you guys again. So I want to give a special thanks to Jinhai for sending out the Nibot. This was a Kickstarter and it was successful. And now they're shipping on Amazon, which I'll put the link down below. I believe you can save some money as well. So check out my links. Okay, here's everything that's included in this giant box. You got the instruction manuals. Let me show you that. You can see that I'm clearly have a lot of information and you guys know how I like instruction manuals so here's where it goes cool okay so more information is the little 20% off discount card we also have a quick start guide so I like that so I'll probably keep that here's the remote control so there's a lot of great functionalities you got the home button up there you got the directional control pad to steer the robot but like a RC card you got your play pause down here is the uh, spot clean button you also have the self-emptying button, so yes, you can tell the robot to go empty itself. You also have the science notification, and these are your three power levels. So, this one is the lowest power at 700 uh, pascals, then you got the 1200 pascals right here, and then for the max session is 2700 pascals. Wow, mind-blowing. We got six extra disposable bags for the self-emptying bin. We got an extra air filter, some AAA batteries, and we also have some extra side brushes. And lastly, we have the self-emptying bin. So I'll definitely check out this. Alright, so here's a quick look at the self-emptying bin. Kind of looks like a mini trash can. So there's the extractor port down there, your two charging contacts, the infrared beam so the robot can help line itself. Now up top is the lid. So here's inside the self-emptying bin. You got the disposable bag which just pops up. Very easy, and there's inside there this little fabric mesh to help prevent dirt debris from getting in your fan unit. Cool. Now, unfortunately, the self empty bin only supports 120 volts, so you do need to get a step up converter and a different power plug if you want to use it overseas. Okay, let's get you guys up close here, and we'll take a look at the robot here. Yes, it still has its plastic wrap. Uh, should I remove it? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Wow, that's such a cool sound. 
All right, so here's the uh, charge indicator. We also have the play pause button. Also, if you hold it down, it turns off the robot. You also have your spot clean function. And here's your knobby thingy. This is the LiDAR dome system. Yes, I call it the knobby domey thingy, my Bobby. Yes, that's the official term I just made up. And here's the LiDAR sensor. Now, what's unique about this guy is it actually has two wall sensors. There's one on the left and there's one on the right. So the right side is that time of flight sensor. If you look real closely, you may notice the difference. Can you guys see that? Yeah, look inside the hole. This is actually an infrared sensor. So it's not as advanced. So what it does is it, once it detects an object, it will actually speed up the side brushes. So these dual side brushes are speed sensitive. So there's that infrared sensor. So when it detects an object, it slows down to minimize impact. Here's the dustbin, just pull it out. Dustbin is removed. I believe this is 600 milliliters. So the top part just folds down and here's all the dirt and debris you put in here. And then up top here's your filter, very nice. And here's where the extractor port is for the self-emptying bin. Guess what? There's also something else. Check this out. Yes, got a little cleaning tool. I can always do my uh, manicure or pedicure, whatever you like to call it. Sweet. And it just slots right back in. Best bin is restored. Okay, so here's everything underneath the robot. It looks like we have two charging contacts. Yes, this charges in the front and actually extracts from the rear. Very interesting design. You got your adjustable wheels, you got your infrared sensors for the clips, also your dual side brushes, your front wheel caster. Okay, so I have been using this robot, so let's check out the extractor bar. So all you have to do is just kind of pinch the two sides here, and this plate comes apart. So here's a look at the extractor bar. You can see there's a bunch of hair wrapped around, but luckily with that cleaning tool, is removed. all you have to do is just kind of swipe it through. And there you go, easy. The hair just comes apart. Super, super simple. Okay, to install it, all you have to do is just find the end. Twist, put your cover back on. You're done, cool. Let's go ahead and get this charged up and we'll see how well the knee bot does. Okay, let me scope this place out. I wanna make sure everything's clear. Yep, there's no one around. All right, I'll go ahead and uh, bring over the goods. Hey man, easy on the goods, this thing's worth more than you are. Easy, easy, nice and gentle now, don't push it too fast now. Okay, okay, good. Where would you like the goods, sir? First, open up this lid here, I gotta see if there's enough storage space to stash the goods. You got a boss. Now, now, don't make too much noise, I can easily replace you. I know Boston Dynamics has the spot mini, which is way better than you are. Don't worry, boss, I got this. I'm the Cobra 710, I'm a bomb disposal robot, so I have a very highly advanced robotic arm. Yeah, 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 enough of this chit chat. Hurry up and get this job done because I gotta go take a nap. Sorry, boss. Okay, the lid's open. What's next? Okay, good. Keep an eye out. I'm gonna go and scope the place to make sure there's enough room. Yep, I can completely put all my lucky charms in there. Alright, go ahead and carefully put my lucky charms down in that hole down there. No, not the fuzzy slipper. Sorry, boss. I didn't mean to take the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No excuses. The spot mini would have been able to do this task a lot quicker than you. Alright, just hurry up now. I'm getting kind of frustrated that it's taking so long. Gentle, gentle, don't hit the fluff now. You better not hit me. Okay, now drop it in. Yep, good, good. Okay, let's blow this popsicle stand. Carefully grab me by the face and put me in my uh, little hole. I'll keep a lookout and you can uh, go away now because I have to go take a nap. You got it, boss. See you later. Okay, let's check out the dry weight of the dustbin. We're looking at about 10.34 ounces. You may know some dirt and debris in the dustbin already. Yes, I like to break in the filters prior to doing this cleanup challenge. So we're going to do a mixture of powder, Skittles, Lucky Charms, gummy bears, hard candies, and some small beads just to give a variety. And I'll go ahead and strategically place all these bits down on the ground. You may notice that plastic water bottle sitting on top of the chair. Well, we're going to see how aggressive the row of vacuum is and if it knocks it down. Like with most smart uh, vacuums, they start with the premise sweep first. Now you notice that the dual side brushes spin quite fast along the edges to help kick the dirt and debris away from your baseboards. Now in this open corridor area, you notice that the side brushes actually slow down a little bit. This is great because it's not scouting the debris as much as I've found on other models. Now on the knee bot, it's kind of interesting. There's actually a dedicated wall sensor on the left and right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's two wall sensors. Also in the front, there's a black kind of oval shape. That's the infrared sensor. Most of these well, vacuums use the infrared sensor and a physical bump sensor. So the purpose of the infrared sensor is to detect objects and to slow the robot down before bumping into it. This helps minimize the impact. Hence, you can see with this wire chair leg challenge, the water bottle didn't get knocked over, so the impact isn't very great. 
I purposely chose a wire chair leg because it's hard for these LiDAR based robot vacuums to recognize them unless they had a camera system and due to the impact even though the infrared sensor sometimes failed to pick up. It still wasn't hard on the furniture. So that's an A plus for that. Also, there's a front rubber bumper to help minimize the impact. So don't worry about your furniture getting dinged up by this roll-up vacuum. For this pickup challenge, I have it on its highest power section at 2700 pascals. There's also two other modes, the medium section at 1200 pascals and the lowest section at 700 pascals. On its quiet mode, you can easily have a conversation so you're not interrupted by the robot vacuum. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the way of the dustbin after two runs. I went ahead and turned on my fancy scale. Lucky my scale auto zero, so I don't have to worry about that. So you're probably wondering, how in the world do I do my fancy duper math? Well, here's how it goes. I take the initial dry weight of the dustbin, which was 10.34 ounces. I subtract that by the total weight, which I'm going to use my scale for. Once I get the total weight, I will divide that by the initial dirt and debris, which was 2 ounces, and I should get a score by multiplied by 100%. Okay, let's go and slap the dustbin back together, and we'll go and see how well the self-emptying bin works. So the Nibar has a very interesting way of self-emptying and charging. So it actually charges from the front and rotates 180 degrees to self-empty itself. Now most robot vacuums have a single way of charging and self-emptying at the same time. As a warning guys, the self-emptying bin is quite loud, so I do recommend turning down your speakers. I guess the main benefit of having a robot vacuum rotate 180 degrees to empty itself is that it won't accumulate dirt and debris near the inlet port, kind of like on other self-emptying systems. Whoa, that was super loud. Let's see if there's any dust Pause in the charging. dust bin. Dust is removed. You guys that close here? Eh, looks like there's still some dirt and debris. So just from my testings, I have found that the Nibot self-emptying bin was good enough to extract most of the dirt and debris for maintenance cleaning, so you don't have to empty out as often. I believe you can get up to about 4 weeks worth of dust and debris before you need to exchange the disposable bag. Okay, I'm going to physically move the robot and see if it can relocate itself and find its charger. I'll try different scenarios to see how good the navigation is. Okay, it looks like the knee bar was able to quickly relocate itself by spinning 360 degrees as demonstrated and was able to quickly find its charger. Okay, let's up the ante and see if we can confuse the knee bar. We'll actually add some obstacles in front of the charger. I'm going to purposely put a chair in front of the charger within like 3 feet of the charger so the robot actually has to take an alternate route to get to its docking station. For the most part, you don't usually move furniture around, but if you do, the robot should have the ability to update its map once you move furniture around. So this is the last challenge I did where I actually put a row of chair legs in front of it, so the robot has to take a longer alternate route. I was quite impressed how well the Nibot was able to figure out how to get back to his docking station. <sighs> I give up. I can't confuse it. Okay, let's go ahead and see how well the robot vacuum cleans with these different types of obstacles. Also, we'll see how well the dual side brushes do along the edges. Now, with the Nibot, it does have a daycare wall sensor off to the right there. This is a time of flight sensor, so you notice that it just gets a couple millimeters from the wall, so it optimizes the efficiency of the side brush. Now, on the left side of the robot, there's also another wall sensor, but this is an infrared sensor, so it's just designed to detect objects and it will speed up the side brushes. For this clean challenge, I have to roll up back and on its max power setting. Also, I have it do two runs so it can optimize the cleaning efficiency. Now, one of the things that most robot vacuums struggle with is this little lip here near my stairwell. Now, the problem with this is the side brushes actually stall, something I found on most robot vacuums like the Roblox, but luckily for the Nibot, both the dual side brushes had no problem going up this lip and not stalling. Maybe on some robot vacuums, they want to prevent damage on the side brush motors by preventing them from being overstressed, but on a knee bot, they seem pretty powerful, and with this little lip, there's no problem. Now, I will demonstrate how the side brushes do sense if there's entanglement, and it will stop the robot vacuum with the shoestring.
Certainly, Bot did really well on the sledge. The side brushes didn't stall, nor did it get confused as it was trying to navigate this challenge. So the next obstacle is the slim profile bathroom scale. Now using its physical bump sensor, the Nibot was able to gently go around it. They kind of moved the bathroom scale a little bit, but it wasn't a huge deal. And because it's programmed to do the perimeter sweep first, the side brushes will continue speeding up even though the decay wall sensor doesn't detect the scale. Okay, so once it's done with its perimeter sweep, it's going to go ahead and do a back and forth clean pun. You may notice that it can't detect the sandal, so it kind of lightly pushes away since the item's pretty lightweight. Now let's go ahead and see how well it does with a taller object. So with any object that's tall enough for the LiDAR sensor to detect, it will actually incorporate that in the map. And you can see that the robot is going around the object, and then it will continue with its back and forth clean pattern. So I would say that the Nibot's navigation is pretty good, the cleaning algorithm is pretty efficient, very similar to what the Roblox does. So now it's going to go ahead and do the second obstacle, and we'll see how well it does with the shoestring. Okay, so let's talk about one of the cons of the Nibot. I have tested a bunch of different types of robot vacuums. Some are really good at being able to untangle themselves, but unfortunately the Nibot, the right side of the side brush actually sucked up the shoestring, kind of caught up in there. So unfortunately it can't unwind itself. The Nibot will try for about 15 seconds or so to try to free itself from the shoestring. Now if it can't free itself, it will alert the user via the app. Also, on the robot, there will be a flashing indicator letting you know that there's an issue. And lastly, it will give you a voice prompt exactly what the issue is. Luckily there's no damage to the robot vacuum or to the shoestring, all I have to do is just gently pull the shoe away from the robot and press the flashing indicator and the robot vacuum will continue on. Now if you physically move the robot to a new position, the robot vacuum will spin in 360 degrees and will position itself and it will just resume where it left off. Okay, so when the Nibot's doing two clean patterns, it will go ahead and do a second day perimeter sweep and then it will do a uh, crisscross pattern. Man, it looks like the shoe defeated the Nibot, that's a sad day. Alright, so that's probably one of the cons of the Nibot is it doesn't have a really good ability to untangle itself from shoestrings or like power cords. So make sure you pick those up before running the Nibot. Fortunately, the Nibot does have keep out zones. So if you have any cables laying around, I highly recommend using the keep out zones. Okay, let's count how many Skittles are in the dustbin. I believe I put down 50, so we'll see if we get 50. If not, well, that's a sad day. Okay, looks like we got 45, so not too bad. We'll go ahead and tell the robot vacuum to go back home. Okay, so here's a minor gripe. If you press that center button to pause the robot vacuum, then you come back and press that button again. The robot vacuum will actually start a new cleaning job. It doesn't resume back to go into its docking station. You do have to physically press the home button. Pause recharging. Pause recharging. Sometimes life throws you lemons, you kind of have to deal with it. So if you're a pet owner, I would keep an eye on your pooch around these robot vacuums. While these robot vacuums are pretty doable, there are some things that the pets can get in trouble with, like the power cables. Also, if they leave a little surprise, most of these robot vacuums won't be able to actively clean up the poo. They'll usually just smear around and make a nice little mess for when you come home. So unless your pet's used to the robot vacuum, I do recommend running the robot vacuum in a separate room that your pet's at. Okay, let's keep on moving. Well, look at this mess. Well, if you have a poo to a pet that makes a mess on the floor, don't worry. Just either get your app or remote and just control it and do a spot clean. Well, we're really at the 20 minute mark. I guess time flies when you're having fun. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up this video and I'll give you my two cents. So the first thing I like about the Nibot is the dual side brush system. I think it's one of the best systems out there. It beat out like the Ecovacs and the Procenic. Now what I like about the dual side brush system is they don't spin crazy fast in the open areas. This is very important if you're doing like a spot clean function so it doesn't scatter the debris. I have tried this on other blow up vacuums and the spot function is kind of lackluster and kind of does more harm than good but not the Nibot. So what makes the spot function so great is that it does a perimeter sweep first, then it does a back and forth clean pattern, then it does another perimeter sweep, and then it does the opposite direction. So it's like a crisscross pattern, so it makes sure it gets all the dirt and debris. So the next thing that surprised me was navigation. 
Usually on a first release product, the navigation is lackluster and it requires some software updates to improve it. But I would honestly say that the Nibos navigation is on par with the Roblox. So you should have any issues if you have like a more complex environment with lots of obstacles and furniture. The next thing is the app. The interface is pretty simple, so I like that. Also, it's very user friendly. So when you press clean, it gives you a list to either do all or rooms. So all you have to do is just select the rooms that you create. Very easy interface, you don't have to look at a map. But the downside to this app is it's very basic. So you do miss a lot of the features like pin to go. You also miss the remote control function through the app. I did find that Nibai got easily hung up on like power cables and shoestrings. So try to keep those up or use the keep out zones through the app so the robot doesn't have any troubles. I would say that the Nibot's self-emptying bin system is a maintenance cleaner, so it's designed to extract most of the dirt and debris from the dustbin, but not all of them like on like the Roombas, where it has dedicated dirt detection sensor and dustbin full sensor, so those robots are designed to handle a lot more dirt and debris, but I did talk to a representative through Nibot and it did say that it does have like an algorithm based uh, system which will determine when it needs to go back to its self-emptying bin and empty itself. Okay, I want to give a special thanks to Jinhai for sending me out this unit to review. And also, thank you guys for watching. And as robot vacuums get smarter and smarter, someday we may have ones that have robotic arms that can do more chores, like do the dishes. Yeah, I can't wait for the day when I can just sit back, relax, have the robot serve me a soda, do the dishes. Okay, so stay tuned because I got a bunch of new products coming down the pipeline. So thanks for watching, and you guys have a great rest of your day.